Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to talk about enticing people out of ideologies and how to serve the earth as if it were the kingdom of heaven. In Proverbs the other day, I was reading a book. Well, I was reading the book, the Bible. <laughs> For all intents and purposes, it might as well be called the book. And one of the quotes was from Proverbs, it says, The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. And I've been thinking a lot about just how YouTube itself has, well, just social media in general, has become a way for the lips of the righteous to feed many people. And how work of like I work for God and I'm so grateful for this opportunity to be on this platform of serving these these many different kinds of people and living this common life and to encourage and to build and to grow together and it just has me thinking more about how we can really treat the earth as if it were the kingdom of heaven. And in that treating as if it were what it ought to be, you actually bring out the best in not only yourself, but in other people. And that is really what a lot of these people that I've noticed, they don't like a lot of these people that I'm talking to, not even just on YouTube, but out and about, it's like the words that I speak sometimes, like like these people didn't even know that they were hungry for the word of God until they heard it. And I'm not like quoting the Bible per se all the time anyway when I'm out and about, but I'll use certain phrases or languages that speak similar to the Bible and all of these holy other texts that made me realize on the phone the other day with, with somebody that we are the word of God and that we are the living word of God and how in the Bible it says that the in the beginning was the word of God and God was the word. It's like, I was also thinking about what Dumbledore says to Harry in the Deathly Hallows Part 2 movie, where he says that words are the most magical source that we have, opposed to like actual magic, of course, in that, in that, you know, in that world of Harry Potter, there is magic and all that kind of stuff, but still the, the power of the tongue is still so profound. And I was also thinking about how the word of God and how magical it can seem to people that are starving and don't even know that they're starving for the word. So what I encourage everybody right now is to understand that in the word of God, the only confidence that can be taken from that word that you speak and that you utter is death. Now, there's a few different kinds of confidence, right, in the, in the world. You get confidence from ad obtaining things or achieving things, but those can be taken from you without death. And then you get confidence from just being around, maybe getting a certain status or getting a certain kind of level or reputation. But your reputation can be taken from you too before death. So that leaves one other option really of confidence, right? And that is 
a confidence where you will not be shaken for you have the connection to the source of creation inside yourself. You know, I was uh, running on on the treadmill the other day at the gym. And speaking of which, I've got my got my pre-workout here. So I hope you guys don't mind, but I'm uh, heading to the gym right after this. So I got to get prepared, but I was running on the treadmill and I got to a point where I was just kind of feeling sluggish and tired and I didn't have a good mentality that day. And I was really just wanting to give up really in the, in the session. I was just like, I'm too tired for this. You know, I haven't I, like, I had such a busy day the like the the day before I woke up I didn't sleep well and I kept telling myself this story about how how it's okay for me to be tired until I realized that I was saying that to myself and I was like snap out of it bro <laughs> and so I I like I just flipped a switch and I don't know there was just something in me that was like I don't I didn't even know what this really meant at the time I just was like I just had this feeling of if you don't push the limit, you ain't going to get the ticket. If you don't push the limit, you ain't going to get the ticket. And then I was like, where am I getting the ticket from? Because like, I didn't know where this was coming from. This was just a internal flow of like, just pulling this like crap out of me, really just pulling out the dirt. And, and, uh, cause I was just, I was in that dark place, you know? And like, I was realizing like, where am I going with this ticket? It's like, ah, oh, yes, the, the ticket to ride. And I thought about the Beatles song there as I was, uh, as I was, uh, you know, running. And I don't know if you guys have heard that song by the Beatles, but there's a song like, she's got a ticket to ride. It's pretty, it's pretty catchy. Of course it's the Beatles. So. I mean, it's the Beatles, <laughs> but I was also thinking about like, I don't know if they knew exactly what that meant. I'm sure they did, but, uh, but like maybe not in the moment, but the ticket to ride, you know, it's like a ticket to heaven, really, if you think about it. And the, if you don't push the limit which means if you don't test the boundaries of what is known, if you don't really look inside yourself and push the limit of what you know, how are you going to get to where you want to be? And again, this goes back to the Proverbs, the lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. So being willing to push the limit to get that wisdom. Now, I'm not saying you should be a fool. Absolutely not. Like, I'm not... Sometimes being foolish is the best way to confront a situation, but other times, because like, you know, sometimes you just need a laugh, but sometimes that kind of lightheartedness is what gets you killed. And when your life becomes the joke, you become someone like the joker. And that's not really good because obviously we know how that story plays out. To become and to integrate your lightheartedness with righteousness is a fine line. And I think that's really what this, what this Bible verse is saying. And I also think that to serve in, on the earth, to serve people with righteousness through our lips and through our tongue that we speak is perhaps the greatest gift that we can give to others. And enticing people out of their ideologies involves speaking righteously because when you speak righteously, and you stand up for what you truly believe is authentic and true and perhaps even godlike then you 
understand that there's a difference between dogmatism and religion and the quality of godliness and heavenliness heaven and hell are states of mind but hellishness and heavenliness are qualities so you can maintain this kind of mentality in your in your mind and there's a kind of serenity that comes with accepting this as a mentality. Because where else are we going to go in this life? Where else are we going to find that connection to source, if not for heavenliness or hellishness? It takes the darkness to know the light, right? And it takes the light to know the darkness. To shed light on the dark spots of the, of the creation of God. So then, the message that I want to give everybody here watching this this video now is to speak righteously and to stand in courage and in confidence because your confidence is going to be the thing your confidence in the source of creation is going to be the thing that brings you everlasting life that is why the confidence that can only be taken by death is everlasting Because death takes us all. And it's not necessary for us to die for the want of wisdom. But it is necessary to stand up and to be on point in our desire for righteousness, which can include the threat but no fear of death so with that being said i hope this message was useful and informative and until next time peace be with you